People tell me that long polynomial division is practically impossible. But you know what? You really, it's the same thing as what you learned way back in fourth grade. Regular long division. Let's take a look at that. Ooh, I'm dying. Hey, remember how we did this? Well, we said, how many times does 3 go into 2? We looked at the first digit, didn't we? And it, of course, in this case, it went in nonce. So we didn't really put a 0. We just went to the next digit and said, how many times does 3 go into 25? And we made a guess. And how many times does 3 go into 25? You have to know your multiplication tables, don't you? And you have to know how to multiply and divide. Now, it goes in 8 times, so I put the 8 over the 5. Neatness is really going to count here with division, OK? And so I made a guess, and then what did I do? I multiplied. I multiplied my guess. And I got 24, and then I wanted to see how much my guess was off by. So what did I do? I subtracted. OK? And then I continued on making another guess. I brought down the next digit. And I said, my next guess is, how much does 3 go into 14? Well, in this case, it goes in 4 times. And I put my 4 neatly over the next digit. And I multiplied. And once again, after multiplication, I subtracted to see what I was off by. Starting to get repetitious, isn't it? Then I brought down the next digit. And once again made a guess. 3 into 21 went in 7 times. I wrote the 7. I multiplied. And I subtracted. And in this case, I got 0. Then I'd bring down the next digit. But there wasn't a next digit, so I knew I was done. OK, that was pretty easy. Hopefully, you remembered how to do that. Recall that basically it was a repetition of the following steps. We estimated an answer. Of course, the answer to a division problem is called the quotient. So we estimated a quotient. Then we multiplied and we subtracted to find out how much we were off by. Then we brought down the next digit. Then what did we do? We went right back and started again. We estimated a quotient, or re-estimated a, a quotient, we multiplied again, subtracted again, and we brought down the next digit again. And we kept doing that until there were no digits left to bring down, didn't we? We kept going back and doing these four steps. Well. Let's do the exact same four steps for polynomial long division. I'm hoping you're going to say it's the same thing. Pay attention, boys. I'll show you how it's done. Let's try this division problem. We're going to look at the first two terms, if you would, of each expression. And why would we do that, just like we did before? We're going to make a guess. How many times does x go into 2x squared? And my guess is 2x. So where do I write it? Right above. Neatness is going to count, remember. OK, Okay. I've made my guess. What's the next step? I multiply. 2x. Now this time, I'm going to multiply 2x times the full divisor. 2x times x and 2x times 2. 2x times x is 2x squared, and 2x times 2 is 4x. Now I have to subtract. Be careful. Subtracting, of course, one, the 2x squareds cancel out. Negative 1x minus 4 more x's gives me a negative 5x. OK, now what did I do before? I brought down the next digit, or in this case, the next term. And I make another guess. I'm looking at the two largest terms, and I'm going to make another guess. I'm thinking x goes into minus 5x minus 5 times. I put it up there, right over the next term, and I multiply. 
minus 5 times the x plus 2. And nicely, in this case, I get minus 5x minus 10. Subtracting, of course, we get 0. And there's your answer, 2x minus 5. You could check it by multiplying 2x minus 5 times x plus 2 also. Okay, let's try another. It's going to be the same thing, though. I'm going to start off looking at the highest terms and making a guess. How many times does 3x go into 6x squared? It's critical, by the way, that these are in descending order, isn't it? Just like the numbers were when you did it in fourth grade. Well, it goes in 2x times and we'll multiply to uh, check, see what we're off by. And I get 6x squared minus 10x. Now, the hard part is the subtraction. I've got minus 19, and I'm subtracting a negative. So in effect, I'm adding. And in this case, I'm going to get minus 9x. Now, we bring down the next term. And we look at the largest terms and, once again, make a guess. How many times does 3x go into negative 9x? Be careful with the signs. I think it goes in minus 3 times. Be neat. Write that minus 3 right above the next term. And we'll multiply. Minus 3 times 3x minus 5. Now, when I subtract in this case, what am I going to get? 12, mi oh, well, of course, minus 9x minus negative 9x. They're going to cancel. And 12 minus 15 is a negative 3. Now, normally, I would bring down the next term, wouldn't I? But there isn't a next term, so I know I'm done. What do I do with this negative 3? Excellent. Well, it's the remainder. So the answer is 2x minus 3, remainder minus 3. Oh, yes. Or you could write 2x minus 3, as you did before, plus or, or minus 3 over 3x minus 5. Okay. That's another way of writing the answer. Got the idea? So these problems can certainly have remainders. They don't all come out even. This is the, this is the big time. Now, let's look at a really tough one. I think it's tough because it wasn't really written correctly. Okay, We're supposed to write these in descending form. And it is written in descending form, but it has some missing terms x to the third minus 1. There's some missing terms there. If I fill them in, perhaps I could be of some assistance. Here's what I'm going to get. x to the third plus none x squared plus none x minus 1. Now, you would normally never write it that way, but I need those terms to perform this long division. So remember that. You need all the terms, at least the ones in the dividend. OK. That was the hard part. Now let's make our guess. Hmm. x goes into x to the third, let's see, x squared times. Multiplying x squared times x minus 1, and I get x to the third minus x squared. See why we needed those missing terms? Otherwise, I'd have a heck of a time subtracting, because they'd be unlike terms lined up. OK, subtracting a negative here, aren't we? And I get x squared. Now, I've subtracted. My next guess is to bring down the next term and make another guess. Looking at the largest terms, I'm thinking x goes into x squared x times. So write it neatly. Once again, you can see why you need those missing terms. And we'll multiply. x times x minus 1 and let's, after you multiply, you always subtract. And in this case, once again, we're subtracting a negative. Be careful. We get a positive. OK. Bring down the next term. Neatness counts. And make your guess. X goes into x. How many times does x go into x? Goes in one time. So you have to write that one. Very important. Now we multiply. 
There's no exceptions. Everybody has to, you have to write everything. Multiply 1 times x minus 1, and son of a gun, what do we get? Another x minus 1, and if we subtract, oh, this one came out even, and there's your answer. Or you could say the remainder is 0. Well, I guess I should have known that. If you look at the answer and the divisor, I remember that I started off, really, I filled in the terms, but I started off with x to the third minus 1, didn't I? The difference of two cubes. And if you think about it, the formula for the factoring the difference of two cubes comes out to just what we got. Well, anyway, Here's today's final Jeopardy answer. we'll do one more example. Now, this one is as hard as it gets. And I would argue that the reason that most people have trouble with this type of long division is that it really one problem entails every operation involved with, with algebraic terms, doesn't it? Adding them, subtracting them, multiplying them, and dividing them, and all the negatives and all that, too. This one's going to have just that. I say, old chump. Okay, so be neat. Let's look at these two terms. Now, how many times does negative x go into 2x to the fourth. Warning, warning, Be warning. careful with the signs, okay? Well, the answer is it goes in negative 2x to the third times. It's a positive divided by a negative. Okay, so we've made our guess. We've neatly written it, and we'll multiply out. And we'll get, in this case, 2x to the fourth minus 10x to the third. We multiply, then we subtract. In this case, subtracting a negative. We end up adding, and we bring down the next term. Now we look at the two largest terms, and once again, how many times does negative x go into negative 3x to the third? Be careful with your signs, and it's 3x squared times. So I write my guess neatly above the next term, and I multiply. And in this case, I'll get negative 3x to the third plus 15x squared. It's a little bit easier subtraction this time. And I get 1x squared, or x squared. This is a long one, isn't it? Bring down the next term. Once again, look at the first two. Negative x goes into positive x squared, negative x times. Write it neatly, and multiply. And I get positive x squared minus 5x. Now we're back to subtracting a negative, aren't we? And I get 9 minus negative 5. I get negative 4x. One last time, bring down the next term. And let's make a last guess. Negative x goes into negative 4x. How many times? Four times positive four times. So write your plus four and multiply. See the repetition here, don't we? Son of a gun, this long answer came out yeah, baby. Yeah. came out even. How about that? Brilliance. That's all I can say. Feel brilliance. I don't think it's gonna get much harder than that if you can do that. Okay? Wow, wow, slow down, egghead. Okay. That's enough for this. Go try the homework.